Well, I was eating my green apple. He said, I want you, don't take the seeds out. I had been taking the seeds completely out of the pepper. So I'm sitting there this week, Brother Reginald. He said, don't take the seeds completely out of the core. He said, keep the core. He said, plant them from the core. Y'all going to catch this in a little while because I didn't understand. He said, plant it from the core. So say that when you threw away my seed this morning, you didn't know that you were throwing away my message that I had sitting up on the dining room table. <laughs> so y'all got to understand, I went and dug it out of the trash to find my seed. Well, they were sitting up on the table. My wife would throw it back. If it's sitting in the wrong place, she will lose it for you in the garbage can. So, hallelujah. And it, amen, amen. I, I know some of y'all are just like me. Don't y'all say that. Y'all looking at me funny, Lord God. But women don't wait to clean. They get cleaned up. They don't ask no questions about it. What it is, it is. Amen. There ain't nothing wrong with that. that I thank God for somebody that's cleaning it up, Lord God. But some stuff has a purpose. Amen. Even though it looks trashy, it's got reasons for being there. Amen. So the Lord said, plant the, he said, plant the seed inside of the core. And I didn't really understand it. I, I, I didn't catch it, but he said, I want you to put the apple seeds, leave them in the core of the apple, and then plant them. So I'm going to show y'all what he told me. Then I'm going to get on out of the way just as quick as I can. But he said, plant these seeds inside of the core. And then he said, anytime you plant seed, plant more than just one. Amen. He said, he said, he said, anytime you plant a seed, try to make sure you're putting more seed in the ground than just one little seed. Even though you're going to get more seed back than what you planted still plant as much seed as you possibly can. So, then he said water. He said, show them that you watered it. To heat it up under there good. He said, don't bury it too deep. He said, because sometimes seed gets too deep and it does not have the power to come from up under the ground because it's been buried. It has not been planted. Hit your neighbor and say, make sure there's a difference between burying and planting. Y'all going to catch this. Last week I talked about Matthew chapter 25. Anybody remember Matthew chapter 25 where the young servant went and buried the talent? And I said, God, I said, now you're going to have me in here put seed in the ground. And the guy last week put his talent in the ground. He said, there's a difference between planting and burying. Oh, you didn't hit me. Y'all got to catch this. I got it so good it messed me up. He said, there's a big difference, Randy, between planting the seed and burying the seed. Because when you bury the seed, there is no coming back. It's done. It won't be able to come up. But if you plant the seed, you recognize that you got to put it at a certain level so that it can Germany. Hit your neighbor and say, that's the word, uh, that's the word that God's trying to get us to catch now. He said he wants to make sure that you plant the seed so that it gets to the place where it can germinate. I didn't, I didn't really understand this, but if y'all want to title this message anything, glory to God, any kind of word, y'all can say, I got to germinate. Hallelujah. I, I, I don't know who I'm talking to, but I, I started asking God, I said, what's going on with different people in their lives? He said, they reach a season where they're supposed to germinate and it don't hit. It don't take because it was not planted properly. He said, the germination is the most important part of planting. So I was sitting there, I was sitting there asking Cindy, and I, I don't want to be ugly, ladies, I just, I just want to ask a question. Uh, uh, I said, Cindy, I said, when we first started having babies, when did you know that you were pregnant? I said, when did you know that the seed had turned into something inside of you? Y'all ain't got to help me, but I'm going to preach in here. Uh, I, I said, when did you know that... Uh, we did what we do, and then all of a sudden you knew something was in there as a result of it. Y'all gonna help me preach in here, glory to God, because there's got to be somebody that understands that if seed gets planted, 
germination has to take place if you're going to get growth. Y'all ain't going to help me, but I'm going to preach in just a little while. Hallelujah. But he, he spoke to me. He said, I want you to catch this because that seed has to have a season where it begins to break out of the seed and stop being seed and starts becoming plant. Hallelujah. It's got to germinate. It's got to turn from one thing. Somebody say it's got to change. Hallelujah. They used to use the word metamorphosis when I was in school. Glory to God. And metamorphosis went, meant that something transformed from one thing to another. It went from a man and a woman and a seed and an egg and went into an embryo and then into a fetus and into a baby. Somebody said metamorphosis. Hallelujah. Glory to God. But the Genesis word for it is to germinate. I feel like preaching glory to God just for a little while because I need y'all to understand that the Bible uses a lot of terminology for seed. It calls money seed. It calls children seed. Glory to God. Matter of fact, when we first started this study, it called the word of God the seed. So the Bible refers to a whole bunch of things as seed. So when I say seed to y'all, I told you last week, you got to find your seed. You got to find out what is it that you're capable of doing. What is it that's inside of you that God has put in you that you got to get into the ground or get into the right environment so that it'll come up out of the ground and show up for you. Y'all are going to help me, but I'm going to get through with this. I'm done with seed right now because he said in the barbershop the other day, he said, you done preached the message enough now, Randy. If don't nobody get it, it's because they don't want it. Glory to God. If don't nobody understand it now, he said, you preach it in the barbershop so good that a little old boy, glory to God, grabs a man, would you give me them scriptures and write them down for me? I feel like preaching. When a little kid get up out of his chair in the barbershop and says, sir, I don't know you, but uh, them, them scriptures that you just gave to this barber, would you please write them down for me so that I can go back and read them? I ain't never heard what you talking about in no Bible. I ain't never heard nobody preaching what you preaching. I need to give me that so I can go read it. feel like preaching glory to God. I got excited. I said, if the church don't get it, at least I know in the barbershop, hallelujah, they'll show up, write it down. Amen. So I said, God, I said, where are we going? He said, I'm about to cause things in your season to germinate. Hallelujah. Y'all sitting at the crossroads, Kadarius uh, and Miles. Y'all sitting at a crossroads in your life and you don't know that if you don't plant right, you ain't going to get growth right. Hallelujah. You don't understand, glory to God, that you're in a season where it is your spring of your life and all you got to do is get yourself in the ground right. Get yourself positioned right and something is going to grow out of your next chapter that's going to make a way out of no way for you. Y'all ain't got to help me preaching here. I'm trying to get everybody into your place of germination. I'm trying to get all of y'all into your place where something happens, glory to God, that you can rest on. Something happens, glory to God, that you can depend on. Hit somebody and tell them there's something that'll happen if you just plant right. There's something that'll happen if you find the seed and get it in the ground. Hallelujah. Apples coming. Hallelujah. That's what the Lord told me. He said apples coming as long as you got it planted right, as long as you got it watered right, and as long as you get it in the right kind of light, he said, y'all, somebody said, the right kind of light. Right kind of light. Mm. Something coming. He said, something coming. He said, all you had to do was plant it, Randy. I planted it, glory to God. He said, just put a little water on it. He said, don't water it down. How don't put it. He said, some seed, y'all ain't got to hear me. He said, some seed, he said, some seed, you got to have water to grow. How do you can't even plant it in ground. You got to plant it in water. God. Then he says, some seed, I got to, I got to watch in this elder Jimmy. He said, there's some seeds over in Australia. They're carnivorous plants. They'll eat like animals. They'll eat blood or they'll eat uh, flesh. He said, there's some plants in the other side of the world. He said, they have to have fire to germinate. You got to burn the thing. I said, Lord, I said, what? He said, some stuff got to be burned so that the bird will begin to grow. I said, so it ain't water that'll make it grow. He said, no. It ain't dirt that'll make it grow. He said, no. It ain't planting in water that'll make it grow. He said, no. He said, it got to have fire. I said, what you mean, God? He said, sometimes I put fire in your life to make you grow. Have y'all ever noticed that sometimes you get stronger when stuff get harder? You ain't ever noticed sometimes that you get a little stronger when things get tough in your life. Anybody in the room ever noticed, Lord of God, look like when the going get tough, look like some of y'all get going. Y'all ain't gonna help me in here. And I said, God, I said, so, so, so there's some seeds in the world that they ain't gonna grow unless you burn it. He said, there's a seed in the world that the only way it's gonna grow 
as if you're burning. Then he spoke to me again. He said, he said, I want you, he said, sit down. So I sat down and started going through seeds. He said, there are some seeds that they ain't gonna grow till you crack them. He said, some of y'all like that. I had to crack you upside your head to get you to grow. Come on. Y'all ain't saying that right. Huh? He said, some of y'all just like that. He said, I had to crack you upside your head. I had to let hell hit your house. I had, I had to let trouble get on you. I had to crack you upside your head before you start growing. Past the I said, well, what kind of seed is that, God? He said, well, remember when you was talking about that peach seed that you grew in the front yard? He said, that peach seed had to be cracked for it. To grow. It's got to crack. It's some, something's got to crack it so that it breaks out of its shell and begins to grow. I said, God, I said, then, I said, God, you bad. He said, yeah, I am bad. But it's a good kind of bad. Amen. He said, I do stuff and men can't figure it out because I do things and I plant things so that nobody can stop it. He said, every seed. First of all, y'all remember this little bear after its own kind. It's going, it's going, if it's grapes, it's going to bear grapes. If it's humans, it's going to bear humans. Hallelujah. If it's money, hell y'all. Yeah. He said, if it's money, if you plant money, it's going to. He said, every seed bears after its own kind. He said, if you give them the word, the word going to come back to you. Y'all looking at me crazy. He said, every seed, every seed that goes out and gets planted, it's going to bear after its own kind. Let me finish. Let me, let me move. Can I, can I just, because I, I got so much of this that I get full of this. Glory to God. No, y'all think, man, he, he preaching the same thing. No, I ain't. I promise you, if y'all will listen to this, y'all will be, y'all, some of y'all will be balling, glory to God. I promise you. I, I promise, because in the season of time, something's going to grow in your life as a result of you getting seed in the ground. Can I preach now? Hallelujah. I'm going to my Bible now, glory to God, because uh, sometimes y'all think I'm just talking too much. And I, I, have to, I have to just stay in the Bible. That way, uh, don't nobody get confused and think Randy didn't run running this Bible, glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. John, 1 John, chapter 3. And I'm hurrying. I'm, I'm going to be out of here in a few minutes. 1 John, chapter 3. Hit your neighbor and say, this is the last time we planning. Hallelujah. Starting in June, glory to God. Hallelujah. We got a road we got to fill up. Amen. So, so, so I'm letting y'all know, glory to God, if I had to pay the boys at the barbershop, glory to God. I don't have to pay a pay. I had one in here a few months ago, glory to God. He chased me down. So I know I ain't going to have to pay nobody. Hallelujah. But I'm going to fill up my road, glory to God. And all I'm doing is I'm planning. Uh, Brooklyn, you, you can hear this. Every, everybody, anybody need $100 in here? Anybody, any, anybody need $100 in here? Anybody? Y'all ain't raising y'all hand right. Y'all looking at me crazy. Every one of y'all, all to quit lying. All y'all need some money. Y'all, every one of y'all need some money. How many of y'all uh, quit lying and raise your hand? So Pastor Randy, every one of us needs some money. Uh, y'all ain't noticed that every one of y'all needs some money. Huh? Have y'all noticed that every one of y'all needs some money? Why y'all lying to me at, when I ask you, do you need some money? Y'all sit up there and look like, like I'm money preaching at you. I'm not money preaching at you. Every one of y'all needs some money. Every one of you, you know, you'll be lying to me if you tell I don't need no money. I got all the money I need. Oh, you liar. I ain't got all the apples I need. If you bring me a bushel of apples, I promise you I eat every one of them. Ask my mama, every green apple she bring me, ask me what I do with them. I like apples. Greens. I don't keep them red ones. I don't want them. Hallelujah. If you like red apples, more power to you. But I want a granny, what they, granny, ain't that the granny green? Bring me a granny Smith green apple. You're the best of friends. Oh, wow. You ain't got to ask nobody. Glory to God. You bring me some ribs. Hallelujah. We'll be good friends. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. I, I, I like people that bring something what you like. Lord God, plant a seed in me, something that you like. Anybody, y'all ain't going to help me. Y'all looking at me. Fun. First John, I'm finna go there. Need to leave folk alone. Tell a neighbor, you got to germinate. Tell a neighbor, every seed that's inside of you has got to germinate. It must it hit must somebody and tell them it must germinate, germinate yeah. if you're going to get something Hallelujah. out of it. Somebody said, this is 
my season of growth. I, I might well go ahead and just stay with the, with the theme of the thing. The theme of the thing was uh, every seed or my seed has got to grow. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But this is my season of growth. I don't know about y'all, glory to God, but I laugh. I laugh because every time, see, growing to you may not mean nothing, but growing to me, hallelujah, uh, if I'm growing, hallelujah, one thing I've learned, that if I'm growing, and I can tell because a branch will shoot out of my arm, a branch will shoot out of my eye, a branch will shoot out of, <laughs> glory to God, a, a branch will shoot out of one of my children. Y'all ain't saying nothing in here. A branch will shoot out of somewhere in my connections, glory to God, and it assures me that growth is taking place in my life. Somewhere in the Bible, I believe it's John chapter 15, Jesus says that I am the vine and you are the branches and apart from me, you can do nothing. But if you connect it to me, I'll cause you to bear much fruit. Get your neighbor and say if you'll get connected, you're going to bear something. I don't know if y'all know what the word bear mean, but bear mean reap. It mean harvest. It means something going to come back that you put in. Come on, Pastor. Come on. Okay, I'm on, I'm on, I'm on first John. I'm going to first John. That's over toward the end of the Bible. First John, chapter three. I got to hurry on because I, I get to hollering and talking and then miss the mark. Glory to God. It says, whoever, whosoever. Verse six, it says, first John, chapter three, beginning in verse six, it says, whosoever abideth in him sinneth not, and whosoever sinneth have not seen him, neither known him. Little children, let no man deceive you. He that doeth righteousness is righteous, even as he is righteous, and he that committeth sin is of the devil. For sin, for the devil sinneth from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of Man was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. Verse 9, whosoever is born of God doth not commit sin, for his seed remaineth in him. He cannot sin because he is born of God. Can I clarify, because y'all, when y'all read that, y'all get nervous. Because all of y'all done seen it. Ain't, am I talking to the right church? Ain't got all of y'all done done something. All of y'all done lied on somebody. All of y'all done gossip, glory to God. All of y'all done looked at the wrong thing at the wrong time, including yours truly, glory to God. All of y'all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Hallelujah. But the Bible here is not making reference of your sin because Jesus is the propitiation. He's the payment for your sin. It's talking about your practice. It's talking about your everyday, how you do things. So it says, you can put the word continue in there if you want to, glory to God. It says, he that is born of God doth not commit, does not continue to commit sin. For his seed remaineth in him. He cannot continue to commit sin because he is born of God. Y'all gonna help me preach, glory to God, because you can go get the Amplified Bible, and I promise you, it'll say continue. It'll say practice. It'll say stay like that. Because y'all ever seen somebody, glory to God, that they trying, they trying, they trying, they trying, they trying, glory to God. They trying, but then when they try so hard, look like they trying, ain't working, they just quit. There's a difference between the person who has an attitude to keep trying and finally makes it. And the person who tries and tries and tries, and then because they're not making it, they just quit. Y'all ain't going to help me preach in here, glory to God. I'm going to get on out of here. Hallelujah. But the Bible says that he has the seed of God in him. Hit your neighbor and say, if the seed of God is in you, you're going to start being like God. Instead of like the devil. That's what the Bible is really trying to tell you. That if you got the seed of God in you for real. Hallelujah. The seed of God is going to make you get like God. And not get like the devil. Touch your neighbor and say he did. Uh, he, uh, he, he made it clear. He said the one that won't do right is like the devil. And the one that keeps trying to do right is like God. <laughs> And so I challenge you to understand. It says the seed of God remains in him. He cannot stay like the devil. 
He got to get like God. Y'all ain't gonna help me in here because every seed bears after its own kind. And if it's got the seed of God in it, it's gonna start getting like God sooner or later. Might take a while, might take some fire, huh? The crack it might take some cracking upside the head, glory to God. But if uh, hit somebody to if it's the seed of God, Amen. it's gonna start looking like God. Uh, before all the time <laughs> you better hit somebody and tell them that's me, that's me that's me, that's me <laughs> I might look like I'm struggling right now glory to God but uh, the seed of God going to beat the seed of the devil y'all they got to help me in here glory to God I got, I got one more I, I got to go on ahead and preach from the barbershop now can I preach from the barbershop the man ran up to me and he said he said Mr. Preacher he said I heard Mr. Q call you the preacher when you walked in the door he said but I, I didn't really believe him when you walked in the door because you didn't look like no preacher you had them holy jeans on like us brothers you were looking you were looking kind of raggedy like you, you didn't look like no preacher. I said, well, I'm trying not to look like one. I, I just want to, I wanted to come out the inside, not look like it on the outside. Touch a neighbor and say, it's a shame when it just look like one on the outside, but you find out, Lord of God, they're just hot bottoms. Y'all ain't saying nothing in here. Uh, it, it's shame, Lord of God, when they tell you that it's a, it's, it's a Michael Core purse, but then when you walk it down the street with it, the, 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 the straps break off. Y'all ain't got to say nothing. See, you wanted to be Michael Core on the inside. Not Michael Core on the outside. Hit somebody and tell them, Lord God, you want them to be Adidas. Uh, uh, somebody said Adidas. Hallelujah. You want them to be Adidas on the outside. You need to know, no. I want them to be Adidas on the inside. I'm on fast. So I challenge somebody in the room, Lord God. The Bible says that if the seed of God remains in you, then sooner or later, you're going to start looking like God and stop looking like so I'm going first Kings. I got to get out of here quick. I got to get out of here quick. Go to God. I started off several weeks ago. I told y'all, go to God in Ecclesiastes. It says there's a time, go to God, and a season for everything under the sun. There's a time and a season for everything. And I declare, God told me I could decree and declare a thing. He said, what you going to decree and declare? I said, this is my season of growth. Just the other day, I got some good news. I'm talking about some real hot. Some hot, it wasn't even hot garbage. It was hot. It was hot. Oh, good God Almighty. Make you want to run. You don't ever got some news make you want to run down the road and shout. Y'all ain't y'all be hitting me. You ever got some news that make you want to run up and down the street, glory to God, and shout, hallelujah. I, I, and then God said, He said, I'm about to do something that's gonna blow your cut picking mind, Randy. He's going to do some stuff that's going to blow your cock. I love, I love to say it like that. See, come down south, people don't understand what that means when they say cotton picking because it hurts your fingers. Cotton picking means it'll work you to death. Cotton picking means it took... Come on, Pastor. Teach, man. Teach. They said, I'm going to blow something. I'm going to do something for you. They're going to blow your cock picking mind and people are going to be trying to figure out... I'm going to tell them it was the Lord. Oh, Lord. It ain't nothing that we did. It's called the seed of God remains in us. We got to start looking like him. Uh, when, when the seed of God is on the inside of you, you got to start looking like God. You might look like bum. You might look like Boudreaux. You might look like Boo Boo the Fool for a little while. But after a while, if the seed of God remains in you, sooner or later, huh, I feel like preaching sooner or later, glory to God, the apples, it might look like y'all are helping me in here. When corn come up out the ground, it might look like tears for a little while. That's why he said, let the wheat and the tares grow together. Because it might look like tares when it's wheat. Hallelujah. But if it's wheat, it's going to come up and put a stalk out there. Uh, and start bearing its fruit. Please, Hit please, somebody please. and tell them it might look like weed when it first start coming up. Might look, y'all, matter of fact, y'all remember the story of the ugly duckling? Well, the ugly duckling was ugly when it first came out. Hallelujah. But as soon as she was a swan, she was the prettiest thing on her. And when all the other brothers and sisters, they were laughing at him when he was a little bitty duck, glory to God, because he didn't look nothing like them. But just as soon, hit somebody and tell them just as soon as he started maturing, hallelujah, and turning into swan. I don't know about y'all, but a swan looked better than a duck all day. A, you know, he started pressing down 
through there in Brooklyn and say, I'm a swan. I didn't know it when they first started because they were calling me ugly. I mean, they were calling me afflicted. They were calling me retarded, hallelujah. But now, <laughs> now that I know who I am. Teach, Pastor, teach. Prettiest thing on the lake, Lord God. When I when I float across here, they know they know that little swan. They used to call him ugly, but he got it going on now. And that's why if you know who you're born of, and you can wait till they show up. The Bible says, "He that endure." Do you sound like you know a whole lot about church? Well, how did you get so adamant about it? I said, "Well, one year." I already feel that preacher come. I, I said one year my dad and the doctor told him that that he was going to uh, pass in, in about six months. And I said, God, it ain't time. I said, it ain't time for my dad to go nowhere. He said, well, uh, won't you get that Bible? So I was reading the Bible and I found a verse in Mark chapter 16, verse 15. It said, these signs are follow them that... You're never in Sunday school, never in no Sunday school book that Mark chapter 16, verse 15 ever show up all of them 18 years that I was going to church. And I said, my daddy ha, needs a preacher ha, that can do this. I, I said, my daddy needs a preacher that can lay hands on the sick and the sick recover. And I need somebody to do that scripture right there. And I'm going to church every Sunday and I don't know no preacher. Amen. the Bible. I said, this is the closest man in the Bible that matched Jesus. And he said, he said, ain't nobody in the Bible matched Jesus. I said, yeah, yeah, there's about three or four of them that match up with Jesus in miracles. And he said, no, sir, ain't nobody in the Bible like that. I said, well, I'm going to send you to the Bible and give you a few lessons that, yeah, Jesus was the greatest of all time. I said, but there are a few other guys that God brought down on the planet that could show sure enough walk in power. That's through Shunem. Well, was a great woman, and she constrained him to eat bread. And so it was that after all, as he passed by, she turned, he turned in thither to eat bread. And she said unto her husband, Behold, I perceive that this is a holy man of God, which passes by us continually. Let us make a little chamber. Somebody say a seed. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to sow a seed in it. I'm going to put a little room out there on the side of our house. Hallelujah. And I'm going to leave the key with him. And every time he come through so he don't have to sweat or get tired or rest, I'm going to drop him that key. Hallelujah. And he can come in and take him a break whenever he get ready. Y'all ain't got to say that. Somebody say a seed. A seed. I feel like preaching glory to God because some of y'all going to misunderstand this. But I'm going to go down through this in just a little while. He, he, said, he said natural grass. 